recordings. Well, as I didn't have a permanent band anywhere, and I didn't have the money or the time to record everything at once in a studio, uh, I chose to record certain songs in different places. So I had done a couple of songs recorded in New York, but I uh, had to get rid of the old guitar player. We had a big falling out, so uh, I managed to get a German guitar player by the name of Tex Napalm to overdub. Then Tex came to Paris with me to meet with some Parisian musicians, including Jimmy Darrow and Sophie Perez and Lisa Barrel. And these were all MySpace connections. But so we went to a studio and recorded a few songs. And then I had a song recorded in Oslo. So I put out an EP called Fallen Birds. And it was recorded in three different cities with people overdubbing from here and there. And uh, it kind of, out of, a, out of desperation, uh, I managed to kind of create a formula that I ended up using for my subsequent album, the full album, The Broken, uh, which was recorded in Australia and New York and Germany and Oslo with overdubbings from Florida and some just different places. It's, it's been quite an international endeavor. I, I think I actually understood the word so that when I first came to Portugal. But it's a term that made more and more sense to me uh, along the way and having met people and having lost people. Including someone like Roland who was a big hero for me as a teenager. And it's, well, I should say just I was very inspired by his music and his style. Uh, and other people as well. But um, certainly an influence that, that, that stuck. And so it was, um, it was quite odd to end up uh, playing support for him in, in Melbourne, Australia in 2008 and meeting him personally and then getting to know him a bit. I would never say that we became friends, but we certainly became acquaintances uh, who certainly musical colleagues of some degree, although I would never put myself on the same level. And also, especially when someone's contributed so much to the world of music and then is no longer amongst us, and it's just, it really, that's, that's sort of the defining point of when music takes on a life of its own. I write for me. <laughs> I write my music for myself in terms of lyrics and music to, re to release, uh, the dark, melancholic side that I have, but also it's really wonderful to be able to share that with other musicians who can grab it and, and, and work with it and and we actually it becomes a new I mean my a lot of my songs most of my songs are not even they're not my they're no longer my songs they are songs that belong to me and all of the musicians who are involved on those songs. Musicians you've been playing with and will not love to and that I've worked with and many who I hope to work with. Um, my favorites are the ones who are not just musicians. I'm, they're all friends. We're like family. 
even though we live in different countries and different places, different cities, play in different bands. But uh, I would say there is Dean Darrow, Tex Napalm, Chris Mealy, Susan Mitchell, Suzanne Melendez, Sophie Perez, Lisa Barrel, uh, and then there's the Australians like uh, Cam Butler and Jalitha Ryan, and uh, the list goes on and on. There's probably a good 20, 25 people that I've recorded with and or will record with in the next record. So I actually would love to get all those people on the next record. It's going to be about. 25 musicians, it sounds like a big band, but it's maybe I'll just have everyone do one song each or something. I don't know. For the most beautiful moment, I will listen to Oh, there have been many. I think one of the best things about doing music in the way that I do it is that it's a great excuse to travel and see people that, um, and people that have new people and then old friends and work with them and play music together. And I don't know if music is an excuse for traveling or traveling is an excuse to play music. It's, it's kind of both one and the same. So the beautiful experiences that I've had all relate to that. Um, I think my favorite tour that I did was uh, my first solo tour of Portugal. And just going to a place, it was the first time I went to a place where I didn't know anyone. And then I met so many great people and had a band for a couple of shows. And it was a big step for me, that was a beautiful time. Um, a beautiful moment so many things happened, going to Paris and recording in a studio, playing at the Fesh Doll, playing in Berlin at Bassi, uh, playing small little villages in the Czech Republic, playing in Tasmania, at the bottom of Australia in Hobart, literally on the other side of the world from where I live playing in Iceland, playing in Norway, in different cities. Now, these are the moments that I think are really, for me, are very special. And just being able to travel and go to new places and then revisit them. It makes life worth living. I've worked a lot with different Norwegian bands in terms of, more in terms of helping them uh, play shows abroad. I, I brought the band, the Norwegian band Madrugada, to New York in 2004. Uh, those are guys that, I'm, that I knew as they were, they were, I met them when they, before they even had their first record out and because the bass player was working in a bar in Oslo. Uh, and they became tremendous, but no one knew of them in the States, and I wanted to bring them to New York. So I brought Madrigal to New York City, and we did some shows together. And I played support for them in, in Oslo at Rockefeller, and in Stavanger at Falcon. And Robert Budos, the guitar player, he and I became very, very close friends. So that was actually probably the most traumatic experience I've had in terms of making a connection with someone. And then losing a friend was, was when, he, when he died. And because that, that it just was unexpected and it shouldn't have happened. But that's... That's how it goes. Mm -hmm.